Hi there. Thank you for joining me again uh, in our study in the book of John. We're going to finish up chapter 12 today from verse 47 down to the end of 50. And uh, verse 50 is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It's a very powerful verse. So come along with me today and just see what this powerful verse is and, and what it means to you and how it can uh, radically change your life. Once again, thank you for joining us in our study in the book of John today. As I mentioned, we are starting at verse 47. Jesus is speaking to the crowds and he's saying to them that he is the light and anybody who believes in him will not walk in the darkness, but walk in the light. So let's just continue on here in verse 47. If anyone hears my word, but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. What a powerful statement, right? What a powerful statement for us because the one thing that uh, the devil tries to put forth in many of our churches and many of the teachings that we hear is that God is ready to judge us. Like if you do a sin, boy, he's going to judge you. And we, we oftentimes get a picture of this big guy sitting on a, on a throne ready to hit the gavel and, and say guilty and uh, condemn us for our sin. Romans 8 and 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So that is us. We are in Christ, right? There is no condemnation. So he says, If you hear my words, but do not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge a world, but to save the world. I did not come to condemn the world. I came to save the world. I did not come to send you to hell. I did not come to, to, to take you into prison. I did not come to, to make you feel ashamed. I did not come to ridicule you. But I came to lift you up. I came to bring salvation to the world. I came to pick you up and to dust you off and to, to set you up so that you could be who, who you are meant to be. And Jesus says that I have not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. And this is a, such an example of the love of the Father and the Son, that they came to show us what life is. They came to show us that 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 God does not condemn us. He does not come against us. Jesus came and died on the cross. He paid for our sin so that we could be whole, so that we could be lifted up, so that we could be dusted off, and so that we could have life, right, and have life eternal. As we read in John chapter 10, uh, verse 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life to the full. And that's what Jesus has come. He's come not to condemn us, but to give us life and to give us life to the full. He's come to save the world, not to judge the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. If the world is going to hell in a handbasket, and it looks like sometimes that that's what's happening. If the world is going to hell in a handbasket, it's not because of Jesus. It's not because of God, because he came and made a way for us. He came and provided a way that we could come to the Father. As he says in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And everyone uh, must come to the Father, must come through me. And if, if we come through him, if we come to him, then he provides that way of salvation for us, right? He, he shows us the way. He has not come to condemn us. Verse 48, he goes on, he says, There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. So he's saying there is a judgment coming. Now, this is something that is very interesting that we need to speak about because many of us are... are, are not clear about sin and how sin affects us, especially as Christians. In fact, it's actually the same for Christians and non-Christians. Every sin from Genesis to the end of Revelations has been paid for. Every sin from the beginning in the, uh, the Garden of Eden to the end of this world has been paid for by Jesus. Jesus paid for everybody's sin. So does that mean that everybody's saved? If Jesus has paid for everybody's sin, does that mean everybody's saved and we don't have to share the gospel because we can just go out and do whatever we want and we're going to be saved? No, no, that's not what it means. The one thing we have to do, we have to combine the gospel with faith. It tells us in Hebrews, in chapter 4, that 
the ones before had heard the gospel, but they had not combined it with faith, so it was of no value to them. So when we hear the gospel, when we hear the good news of Jesus, it needs to be combined with faith so that we then become a new creation because faith demands a reaction. So when you take the gospel and you, you combine it with faith, then it requires an action on our part. And the action on our part is accepting Jesus into our life. And when we accept Jesus into our life, then we become that new creation. So then we are set free from this law of sin and death. We are not condemned. However, if we hear the gospel and we don't accept the gospel, if we choose not to combine faith with it and to accept Jesus into our life, even though all the sin has been paid for, that payment of sin will not be applied to our life, so then we are going to have to pay for the sin, even though uh, Jesus has offered to pay for our sin. So it's like somebody coming to give you a gift. If somebody says, you know, uh, I hear that you're kind of down, you haven't been working so much, and you have, you know, you're behind on your rent or whatever. Here, let me help you pay up your rent. And if you refuse to accept the person to pay your rent and to get you caught up, then it's of no value to you. It's not going to be a blessing to you. You're still going to have to pay the rent. Somebody has to pay it. And sin is the same way. Sin has to be paid for. So there ha it has to be paid by, by someone. So our sin has been paid for by Jesus. But if we do not accept that payment, then we are going to have to pay for it. And that's what it's telling us here. He says, there is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them in the last days. He has come to give us life. He has given us a gift, his grace. It's called his grace. He is extending his grace to us, a gift of salvation. But if we don't accept it, then there's nothing he can do. And, and there's going to be a judge that is going to judge us in the last day. <clears throat> They're going to open up the books in the last day. And if your name is not in the book of life that you have accepted Jesus, then you are going to have to pay for your sin. And you are going to go to hell, which is not going to be a nice place. It's going to be a terrible place. I mean, many people joke around, oh, I'm just going to go to hell because all my friends are going to be there. We're going to just have this big party. Well, it's, that's not the way it is. There's not going to be a big party. You're not going to be there with your friends. You're going to be in total isolation and absolute darkness. And you're going to suffer a horrendous thing. The devil, he is a liar, right? Uh, we explained uh, John chapter 10, verse 10 uh, in the past. But again, it says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief it's talking about there is the devil. His job is is to to steal kill and destroy and he's very good at his job and he will use lies and deceptions and falsehoods to persuade you that you can just go out and have a good time and everything's going to be wonderful you know everybody's going to get saved or, or whatever you know or you're going to be in hell with all your friends it's just going to be a big party time well that's just not the truth that's just not the way it is it's going to be absolute blackness and it's going to be loneliness and isolation and pain and agony. You're going to wish you could have, you're going to wish you could die, but you won't be able to. And it's going to be a terrible place. But if we accept Jesus now, then we come into this light and this judgment will not come upon us. Verse 49, I did not speak on my own, but the father who sent me commanded me to say all these things that I have spoken. He's, he. You know, so many times Jesus says to us uh, in the Gospel of John, I counted at one time, I think it's around 28 times, that Jesus either says outright or he infers that the things that he does and the things that he say are not him, but the Father in him. And that's what he's saying here. For I do not speak on my own, but the Father who has sent me commanded me to say all the things I have spoken. So the words that Jesus has spoken are not his, but the Father. The Father has come down and spoken through him. That's why he says, if you know me, you know the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Because I came down to, to be the voice for God to speak to you. And this is an example for us today that I think many times we miss. The, when we become a Christian, we become like Jesus. Jesus, we are this new creation, and we have this new spirit in us that God wants to work through to accomplish his purposes here on earth. He wants to speak through you. He wants to work through you. Many of us think we have to do a work for God, 
If you go back to, to John chapter 6, verse uh, 29, uh, when we did chapter 6, it, you know, the people are asking Jesus, what is the work of God that we should do? They wanted to know, what, what work is God going to be pleased with? What work does he want us to do? And Jesus said, very simple, the work of God is this, that you believe in the one that he has sent. That's the work that we have to work at. Not in saving souls, not in doing all these other works. We have to believe that Jesus is who he says he is, that he is the son of God, that, that he has come to set us free from the law of sin and death. And then as we submit ourselves to that, as we submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit that is within us, as we do, as it mentions in Romans 12 and 1, if we present ourselves to God as a living sacrifice, then he is able to move through us to accomplish his purposes here on earth, to do what he wants to do. When we submit ourselves to God as a living sacrifice, then we are not, we are no longer owners of our body, or we're no longer owners of ourselves. We say, here God, here we are. Send us wherever you want, tell us to speak however you want, do whatever you want to do. And, and we can't be concerned about what people think. We need to do what God is telling us to do so that he can fulfill his purposes. That's the whole reason Jesus came, because God has chosen, and back in Genesis, I'm not going to go into there today, but you can go and read it, that he has chosen to work through men, and because there was no man perfect enough to bring salvation, there was no man able to bring a reconciliation between God and man, Jesus chose to become man, to come to this earth so that God could work through him and speak life to us, and speak the gospel to us, and then Jesus go to the cross and die, and was buried for three days and rose again, so that he, he could become the light of the world, and so that we could walk in this light, so that we could be, become this new creation. It's an amazing thing when we understand this all, that G, what Jesus has done for us. So he's saying that, I do not speak on my own. The words that I speak are my Father, and that's, that's what he's telling us, right? And I love this last verse of this chapter. I just love this verse, and Jesus continues to speak in verse 50. He says, I know that his commands lead to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Hallelujah. So he's just saying, his words lead us to eternal life. If you want eternal life, then you need to have the word of God in you. You need to hear what Jesus is saying because the words that Jesus spoke, the things he spoke, the things he taught us, what he said to us came from the Father and he delivered them to us. And Jesus says, I am obedient to these words. I, I listen to my Father's command because his commands lead to eternal life. And this is why he came to this earth, to bring eternal life. He knew that by doing the will of his Father and doing everything that he needed to do, he would die on the cross, but he would rise through eternal life, that he would live forever, and that he, not only for him to have eternal life, but by going through that process, he gave the opportunity for every one of us to have that eternal life. And when we accept Jesus into our life and that old sin nature, that old man is nailed to the cross and that new creation comes into us, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any are in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. We have been reconciled with God. There was enmity between God and man, but we have been reconciled because of Jesus and we have started our eternal life at the moment that we believe in Jesus and we accept him into us. And when that happens... That, that is an amazing thing. We go from walking in darkness to walking in light. We go from stumbling around not knowing what our life is about, what the purpose of our life is, to, to walking in the light. I want to pose a question for you here. What is the purpose of your life? Do you think you just came here just to make up space? You know, your mother and father got together and you were born and you're just here to live your life for a short time and then you're going to go in the grave and there's going to be no more? No, there's a, there's a bigger plan than that. There's a bigger purpose than that. God who created this world knew you before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world, he knew that you would be living at this time on this earth and that he has put a plan and a purpose for your life together so that you can accomplish the things that he wants to accomplish through you. He, you're not here by mistake. It doesn't matter how you got here. It doesn't matter how you were conceived or how you were born. It doesn't matter how difficult your life has been. It doesn't matter how difficult the situation that you are in is today. 
When we fix our eyes on Jesus, as it mentions in Hebrews chapter 12, if we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, when we fix our eyes on him, when we get sold out to him, when we present ourselves as a living sacrifice to God, then God can take what is broken. God can take, because that's what we all are, we're all broken. He can take what is broken and unqualified, and he can move through us to accomplish his plans and his purpose. Remember Elijah, he's crying out to God. Oh God, I'm the only one left. Nobody else is following you. I'm the only one left. God says, oh no, I got 400 hidden away. Don't worry, just do what you're told to do. Just do what you're told to do. And in the end, Elijah didn't. <laughs> he, he told him three things to go out and do to anoint three different people for three different purposes, and he only did one. And Elijah didn't fulfill the purposes, but he, he, he did a lot of the things that God had called him to do. And for us, this is what God wants. Jesus says, I am obedient to my Father. The commands that I, he gives me, I do because I know they lead to eternal life. So when we look at Jesus and we hear what he says, what he is speaking, he is speaking eternal life to us because he's speaking the word of God. The word of God, his commands, the things that he is teaching us are eternal life. And when they come in, they bring eternal life into us when we accept Jesus into us. Remember John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he was with God in the beginning. So this Word, when he comes into us, Jesus himself, when he comes into us, he brings that Word of eternal life into us, and we become that eternal being. Hallelujah. Father, we just pray for each one, Lord. We pray for those who are searching. We thank you, Lord, that we are a new creation, that you have a plan and a purpose for us, that we have this light in us, Father. Father, we just pray that this would be an encouragement to each and every one. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you haven't seen any of our sessions so far, you can go to our YouTube channel, Listen Below, or to our website, Listen Below, and they're all there. And uh, also recordings of our Zoom meetings that we do, and also another series I did called Body, Soul, and Spirit. So you're free to avail yourself of all those things, and be free to share everything with your, your friends and your family. And anybody you know, let, let the word of God go out and be a blessing to many people. Amen. Okay, girls, take us away.